well, the, biz the entire business of where we're going with this COVID story, the, thing the unfathomables, the known unknowns, the unknown unknowns, etc. Now more than 50 Tory MPs have written to the Prime Minister calling for a clear roadmap out of lockdown restrictions, particularly in the north of England, of course, where those restrictions and tier threes have mostly kicked in, warning the region risks being left behind. The letter from the Northern Research Group said the pandemic threatened Boris Johnson's pledge to level things up. Of course, they also called for an economic recovery plan for the region, arguing it had been hit the hardest by the virus. In response, number 10 said they are committed to levelling up across the country. Now, We'd all like to see a way out of this. Show me the person that doesn't want to see out the, a way out of this dreadful lockdown. The question is easy to throw out there. We know about the economic damage. We know about the problems with patients trying to get conventional treatment on the NHS. We know about livelihoods demolished. We know about mental health issues. We know about businesses closing and utterly decimated. The questions come thick and fast. The answer's apparently a little more tricky. So one, while one group of MPs is arguing for a way out of the lockdown, and one assumes, one assumes, tacitly adhering to the idea of herd immunity. There's a group of scientists over there and they've come along and scuppered the entire idea of herd immunity. It's interesting because if you had to name two words that have cropped up on this show and others, probably everywhere you hear this debate, uh, more than this, I'd, I'd be interested to know what they... Herd immunity. Um, I, I can remember back in... So where do we start this? In March, May, June time, people started talking about herd immunity. Um, and no one really knew what it meant. I remember looking it up just so I could be absolutely sure what was meant by herd immunity. I mean, it, it sort of does what it says on the tin. And it has divided the room. It's divided the room in many respects. Some people are sort of arguing almost from a conspiratorial um, standpoint on this one, that you know, the reason we don't have it is because they don't want it to work. Is I don't buy into any of that, cobblers. Um, it's not a conspiracy theory. Okay, we can talk about World Economic Forums and the like, which, by the way, is an NGO. It's not a it's a non-government organisation. I know it's got some powerful members, etc. But don't be too perturbed by everything you see online. Although I promise we are going to return to that subject of the World Economic Forum at some point. Um, but herd immunity—that's been the the screaming answer, the Barrington, the Great Barrington Declaration uh, calls essentially for that. We will have back on with us. We're delighted that uh, Dr. Sunetra Gupta will be with us uh, just in, in the next section to outline what she feels in response to the scientists that are saying, actually, you can't have it. Hopes that populations can become immune to COVID-19 have been dashed by new research showing that antibodies fall rapidly after recovering from the disease. So-called herd immunity has been post proposed by some scientists as a better alternative to lockdown in tackling the pandemic. Now, this was a major UK study. It took place at Imperial College London. It wasn't insignificant. 365,000 people over three rounds of testing between June and September. It found that rather than building immunity over time, the number of people with antibodies had fallen by 26% since lockdown was eased over the summer. What do you make of that? 0344 499 1000. So that is suggesting that anyone who had dared dip their toe into the debate about herd immunity have been wasting their time. Tell me as best you can, and we can all be an armchair epidemiologist on these things, or a virologist, or even a, a clinician, scientist of any description. Why are they wrong on that study? Tell me why they're wrong. I want to think they're wrong. I desperately want to think, actually, come on. I mean, because this is the as near as I can get to it is, well, yes. I mean, you might lose some immunity, uh, but... The, that happens with anything. It doesn't hang around in the body, but the body remembers. You know, the, you, the, the genetic makeup of the human condition is that it, it will fight it and, and come back the next time something happens. So I don't know whether those arguing for herd immunity suggested it means you will never, ever get it again, but you'll still be placed to fight it again. I think that's the, the way that theory would go. So tell me about why you think the scientists might have got this completely and they've gone off half cocked on this one. It'd be interesting to see how you counter a scientific explanation. I wish I could. Instinctively, I want to. Um, and I want to be the man that's as mad as hell about this. But I, I don't, you know, if I was standing there 
with senior epidemiologist McDougall, who was explaining to me why they'd spoken to 365,000 people. And they've done three rounds of testing on all of those people. And it turns out that what they thought was uh, were people with immunity either no longer have it or it's dr drastically reduced, suggesting you can catch it again. So you're sort of back to square one. Ergo, herd immunity does not work. End of. OK, are you buying into that? Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand. Set that against the position of the 50 conservative MPs that are looking around and thinking my neck of the woods is being decimated. It's being absolutely decimated because businesses are closing. People want to work. They can't go to work. And even those that can can only do it sort of to a limited degree. And this is the kind of. This is the profile of the country right now. We ain't seen nothing yet. I got a text from my sister at quarter to 12 this morning and it simply said, I've just been made redundant. And she will be one of, she was kind of half expecting this. She held out that she might be one of the half dozen they keep out of, I think, 35, 40 people. Um, she wasn't, she, she fell. And she will be one of hundreds of thousands. And she's also like so many others, you know, she's not an entrepreneurial kind of person. She's a, a, a busy mum who just wants to, you know, go to work and looking for a job and finding a job against the current backdrop is not going to be the easiest thing. And when you've got a limited skill base, and I say that not to, to be insulting to anyone who feels they're in that kind of particular category but you know sort of general office work that kind of thing you know a bit of input in the computers um you think well where, where would i go with that what do i do with that do i have to retrain what would i retrain for can i afford can't afford to retrain what does retraining involve there are going to be so many stories like this so the 50 tory mp saying we need a roadmap out of this are absolutely bang on we need a roadmap out of this but what form does that take what does a roadmap out of the lockdown look like? We know what it looks like in theory. We all we could all name what we'd ideally like to see. But what we want and what can happen are two vastly different things, of course. I'd love to see everything just reopen up and go back to normal. I'm told by the Prime Minister and others that, you know, this herd immunity thing won't work. You can't shield the vulnerable. You think you can, but you can't. And eventually fit people who might have COVID and are doing okay will eventually infect people who aren't quite so fit and then the vulnerable get it and they don't survive it or they have terrible difficulties for a, a period of time etc so I'm told that doesn't work where do I go then with my roadmap I've got a blank piece of paper here um, what I do know is that it's bonkers it's it's like in a way we kind of laugh at what's going on we sort of go, oh, isn't this strange? Everybody's to all the new reality. Who'd have thought we'd have been doing this? Oh, put my mask on. Everybody's got that kind of strange. Um, it's not even a British spirit. I'm sure if you live in Italy or Spain or France or something, the same kind of conversations are taking place. But it's not funny. It is not funny at all because livelihoods, mental health, physical health, cancelled appointments, decimation of businesses. It's an absolute royal mess out there. What should that roadmap look like? If you advise advising the, the 50 Tory MPs, let's start with this, because every time one of those suggestions comes up, I can see the prime minister. I can see these scientists saying you can't do that because otherwise you'll just start reinfecting. You can't do that. How do you begin the process of reopening if that if that is the right way to look at this? Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand. I know I, I share it. It doesn't make sense, does it? This whole thing doesn't kind of, it, maybe it's not meant to make sense because it's never happened before and there's no template and no precedent and nobody knows what they can draw on. There's no file at the bottom of a governmental cabinet they can go to and say, can we pull out the lockdown pandemic rule book, please? It doesn't exist. And so it's no wonder we look at this as citizens of this country and planet Earth, scratch our head and think this is absolutely bonkers that is going on here, as Richard Madeley was just saying a second ago. He can go and see his lad who works in an office up the road, but he can't go to the pub with some of the people in those offices. He could walk into that office and mix with all of those people, have a cup of tea with all of those people, he can't go to the pub. That's just the most obvious example of why this is absolutely mad and unfathomable and contradictory and confusing and damaging. That man, the damage 
the damage is off the scale. 0344 499 1000. What are you saying to the scientists who have just told you that your herd immunity idea is absolute cobblers and it cannot it cannot work? And what would you say to the Tory MPs looking for that roadmap out? 